Oasis Podcast, episode 15, Tony McCarroll. Welcome to the Oasis Podcast, episode 15. The one that we've all been waiting for, this is Tony McCarroll. So I've got my first actual, real-life, proper, full-on member of Oasis on the Oasis podcast. So we had Mark Felton, who played with them in uh, Nebworth and played on a few of the recordings. We had Steve White, who was on the Brotherly Love Tour. But now we have Tony McCarroll, one of the original founding members of Rain, that then went on to be Oasis. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be happier to, to have him on. And uh, as you'll hear in the interview, I think a big uh, thanks for him coming on has to actually go to Brian Garcia, because, um, yeah, Tony and Brian have had a bit to do with each other, and I think it was seeing um, Brian's episode and the, um, the the massive response that that got that sort of convinced Tony that this was a worthwhile way for him to spend a, 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 an hour or so of his time talking to me. So, um, yeah, so thank you to Brian Garcia. Thank you so much to Tony for, for coming on and speaking to me. So that is going to be coming up shortly. So just a couple of other bits um, as we do over here. Uh, first off, thank you to Paolo Hewitt for the last episode. It was uh, really good fun to speak to Paolo. He's an absolute um, hero of mine with his writing. is just brilliant. And um, yeah, and, and so I'm pleased you guys uh, enjoyed the episode with Paolo. That was great. And uh, yes, there's still been some more news. So uh, Oasis still in the news. As I say, it's only been a couple of days, really. This I'm recording this on Friday morning. Um, now, forgive me if I'm babbling even more than usual. I was up until about half four last night watching the uh, UK election results come in. And so I'm, I'm working on about two and a half hours sleep. So um, I'm trying my best. But yeah, Oasis have still been in the news for the last couple of days. Um, following the One Love Manchester concert... Um, Noel didn't come out and officially say it but um, people close to him came out and said yes he will be donating all the royalties from um, the performance of Don't Look Back in Anger um, to the uh, the fund for the people that were killed and injured in Manchester and also uh, and then it's just come out as well that Liam's going to do the same so the royalties that he had from that particular song are going to go to those which is a, a class move from those guys so that's great and it's great to see you know Oasis albums I think Time Flies was currently number one in the iTunes chart, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, amazing to see them back in the charts. Obviously not for a particularly good reason, if, if a lot of it was down to that one love Manchester. But, you know, I think that just Liam being back in it, being so... Uh, and being in the press and being on the TV and everything um, would have driven that anyway. But, um, yeah, just fantastic to see Oasis back in public consciousness, back in the charts, people talking about them. It's great to see. And speaking of charts... Um, the Oasis podcast is currently riding high in the iTunes charts uh, music category. Now, I haven't been even really taking any notice of the uh, iTunes charts and, and having just moved over to um, our new network, Audio Boom. Just uh, the other day, I just thought I'd have a quick scan down the iTunes music charts, you know, not expected to see our name on it. And there we were, number 17, which I just couldn't believe it because we were ahead of people like Annie Mack, we're ahead of uh, Nick Grimshaw, you know, we're a couple of places behind Graham Norton, you know, all these like huge, you know, BBC shows, you know, I couldn't believe it, you know. So how we've managed to get on there, I think a big thank you to Audio Boom because obviously, you know, while the numbers have increased, I don't think they've increased that significantly to suddenly appear uh, on the charts where we weren't before. So, um, so yeah, it must be that Audio Boom have got a bit more sway with iTunes. Um, so that was just great to see. But that is primarily down, I believe, to um, obviously the fact that you know we're getting a, a lot of people listening to the podcast, but it's also driven by those ratings and reviews. So I'm sorry that I bang on about this in every episode, but if you want us to be featuring higher in the charts and then getting better, um, getting better guests on, up to the calibre of uh, Tony McCarroll, then, yeah, the best way you can help me with that is just by going onto iTunes and, and giving me five stars and writing a review. Um, so if you can do that, that'd be great. And as we, as you know, what I do whenever people do that is I read them out. And so um, now's as good a time as any to have a look at that because we have had a uh, one more review in the last couple of days since 
and since last episode, which is from Martial Artist 2, and this is titled Amazing Makes Time Fly. And uh, he says, uh, interesting and educational podcast to listen to during the day. Great for all Oasis fans. Looking forward to more podcasts in the future. And hopefully one or both of the Gallagher brothers appear on here soon. Well, thank you so much, Martial Artist 2. I would also, <laughs> obviously, I'd love to have uh, Liam and Noel on. And they are welcome to come on any time. So Liam Noel, if you're listening, come on down. Um, the other one as well that, that I think, you know, it would be great to get would be Bonehead. Um Bonehead, as I think he's aware of the podcast, he's liked tweets that we were uh, we were tagged in, so he knows about us. Um, and so, yeah, we're just hoping that uh, he also sees the benefit, same as Tony did, of uh, of coming over and, and having a chat. So, if you want to help out with that, then um, the best way to do it is just to uh, tweet at Bonehead's page on Twitter, and uh, if he sees like a barrage of tweets coming in saying that. You know, it's a worthwhile exercise for him to to come and spend an hour chatting to me. Then, hey, we might get him. Um, and yeah, seeing as Alan White and um, Gwigzy are sort of pretty much uh, disappeared from public view, and then sort of Gem and Andy and and Zach Starkey and Chris Sharrock are all very much working musicians and very very busy. Um, I think the best chance we've got is uh, to get original, uh, to get actual Oasis members is going to be um, Bonehead. So. So if you can help me out with that, that would be great. There's a couple of other bits of Oasis news. Liam uh, tweeted that his solo album is finished, so that's good to good to know. But we've had a few um, a bit of discussions on the old Twitter and Facebook and things about the fact that it's quite strange that he appears to be playing so many new songs um, while it's still a good few months before the album actually comes out. Um, you'd think he would be holding some of those tracks back or maybe playing more um, more Oasis songs, but... But yeah, I think there's there's a good chance that we're going to be getting another single um, at some point, you know, in between now and and the album officially coming. So, so we uh, look forward to hearing that, obviously. And then, um, yeah, and then just a little bit of the fallout from the um, I mentioned it on the last episode, the fact that Liam had kind of had a go at Noel for not turning up um, at that uh, One Love Manchester gig, and after that um, Pink Pop performance of which I played a little clip last episode. Uh, Liam was also interviewed on there and he talked about that in a bit more detail so let's have a little bit of that here. Well obviously I saw your Twitter this morning, uh, your brother, you really wanted him to be there. No, I mean, it's not about whether I wanted him to be there, I just think he should have been there, you know what I mean? He's like, you know, he's from Manchester, and, you know, and he, you know, he's, you know, he could, you know, he should have been there mate, it's nothing to do with me man. And all this, like, people are going, oh, you know, he's staying away because of Liam. And it's like, fuck off, mate. I, like, I'd have gone up to him and give him grief, you know what I mean? He'd, if he was in the next dressing room, I'd have gone, all right. And then he'd have gone on and done his thing. It's nothing to do with Oasis getting back together. I'm getting fucking sick of that. It's like, fuck Oasis. Oasis has nothing to do with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He should have been there. He should have, he should have been there as a musician to go on and play songs for them beautiful kids that were killed and injured, you know what I mean? But he wasn't. That's life. Next time you see him, you ask him the question. Yeah. And I, you- I made my... My um, thing is clear on Twitter. A few other bits, uh, just to um, give a shout out to a few community members. Um, the next episode coming up is with a guy called Nick Amys, who's a who's a journalist and uh, an author, and uh, he has written a, a book called um, She's Electric, which is a novel set in Britpop times, and that has um, we talk about it in the episode coming up next week, but that has been optioned now to be a film, and uh, they have officially now launched that. So. If you want to uh, maybe support that film, um, they're looking for donations to get things moving on that. That's at she'selectricmovie.com or if you follow them at she'selectricmov on uh, Twitter. As I say, get in touch with those guys. Nick was very kind enough to, to come on the podcast. Um, so, so yeah, if you want to support art, then yeah, go and have a look at the different reward options and, and go and support them. Just to let you know, I've, um, once again, talking about Twitter, um, we were doing polls on the best Oasis album, and I seeded it, and that was good fun figuring out the seeding. Um, basically, I ignored what everyone else had said and just went with my own seedings. And uh, it ended up being pretty obvious in that the first four albums, I kind of because it's to make quarterfinals, I included the Master Plan as an album, um, which some people said, that's not an album, it's a collection of B-sides. Yes, I know, but if we're going to do eight then it's just nice to get quarterfinals, otherwise it's, you know, with seven, well, how can you do that? So yeah, so basically I seeded it and those the first four 
ended up going through into the semi-finals against each other. Definitely maybe beat the master plan. Morning Glory beat Be Here Now. And then in the final, definitely maybe um, beat Morning Glory. So according to us, according to the Oasis podcast Twitter followers, definitely maybe is officially the best Oasis album. Quick shout out to Ross Hayes, um, who we've played a, a mix on here before. He's done a mix of uh, I'm Out of Time. And uh, yeah, I'll only, you know, I'll only play a little bit here, but um, go and check that out on his YouTube channel. Um, if you just search for Hazed and uh, Oasis, then you'll find him. But this is a great little mix of I'm Out of Time. Shout out goes to Christopher Robinson, who has set up the 21 Pilots podcast. And he's very much inspired by... Um, what we've done with the Oasis podcast and he gives me a nice shout out on the um, at the end of his first episode so if you check him out um, at 21 Pilots podcast on Twitter um, as I say even if you're not a big 21 Pilots fan it's not going to be purely based around 21 Pilots he's going to be talking to people and, and just digging he's going to be digging into a lot of other different types of music he's a massive Oasis fan he's a big um, Pink Floyd fan and all these other bands so I think we're going to be on there, he's going to be digging in, speaking to lots of different people uh, about all kinds of music, but with the underlying theme being 21 Pilots. So yeah, please check that out and tell them the Oasis podcast sent you. And just to let you know, as I've moved over to Audio Boom now, um, you will have noticed now that there's, you may have heard adverts at the start of the uh, of the show, um, which is uh, which is just very useful for me because it means that I'm not having to pay a monthly fee now. So, so apologies if those adverts are a little bit annoying, but there we go. One of the cool things about Audio Boom is that the stats are a bit more detailed, so I can actually break down, you know, how many listens we've been getting, uh, even like breaking down to gender. I think we're about uh, 12% female, 88% male at the moment, which is interesting to see, and. Um, yeah, and the split geographical. So obviously it's primarily UK. We've got the US, Canada, France, Sweden are the main places that people are listening. So that's just really interesting to see, I think. Um, and it also splits it by city as well. And so I can see kind of that there's particular pockets of, you know, of where people do sort of tend to listen to us. Um, and as I've said in here before, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. If you are listening in Sweden or Japan or America, wherever it is, um, Record a little audio file, record a little file, even if it's just on a on an iPhone, uh, voice memos, app or something like that. Email that over, just say, giving a quick comment on, you know, the podcast or a particular episode you've enjoyed or, or just whatever you want to do and just saying hello and uh, I'll play it, you know, just so you can, you can be heard on the Oasis podcast. As I've said in here before, one of the issues with moving over to Audio Boom is that um, I really need to... to follow the rules and only have 30 second music clips and so what I've been doing is just going back and um, re-editing and while I've been going back and doing those re-edits what I've also been doing is just tidying them up a little bit because that first sort of two or three episodes I just kind of just threw up there I didn't really know what I was doing and I just wanted to get them up so I didn't spend a huge amount of time editing them so yeah, so the the kind of a few people have sort of come back on online and said, oh yeah, the the it's quite a shock that the levels sort of are out and then the music kicks in, it's suddenly massively louder and you know people got to turn down their volume and things like that. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, that should be better. So if you go back and listen to episode one again, that you will have heard that I've re-recorded that now. So that's um, just sounds a little bit nicer. And then over the few over the coming weeks, I'll be going back and re-editing the uh, other ones as well. So. If you sort of started listening to those and thought and didn't really enjoy the experience because of my um, shoddy recording and editing, then um, yeah, over the coming weeks I'll give you a heads up when it's uh, when it's sounding a bit better to go back and listen to those. And just finally, this is probably the last reminder we'll get before um, the What's the Story night on the 17th of June in Northampton. So um, there are still some tickets left. I've spoke to the What's the Story guys. I'm going to be there from about nine o'clock in the area and I'll be on sort of active on Twitter so if you're around and you want to come and meet me and say hello and come on down drop me a tweet we'll let you know where we are and um, yeah so we'll be drinking somewhere nearby probably from about nine and then we'll be in the um, the Charles Bradlaw from ten uh, for the uh, for the what's the story night uh, and it's going to be ten till three and it's going to be a great night I'm going to be recording as well so so I'm going to try and get around lots of different people and just do quick introductions and um, record that. And then we're going to put out an episode um, 
just based on all those little bits of interviews and things from that night. So I think that'll be a, a little bit different. And I think that'll be a really good episode. So yeah, if you haven't booked, come on down. Um, it's going to be a great night. It's going to be really good fun. Great music from 10 till 3 in the morning. And I think it's like tickets from £5. So it's nothing. So come on down and we'll see you there. So joining me after this brief musical interlude is the legendary... Tony people will absolutely love that because he's got the record so far because so the record was brian cannon and yep. then and then brian garcia beat brian cannon's record wow. and, and then um and then last week was steve white and uh right. and he didn't beat brian garcia so brian garcia is uh, officially more popular with the oasis fans than uh, than steve white there you go well, this is the only reason why i'm here believe me <laughs> Yeah, Brian Garcia, without, <laughs> to beat that man. And he's a lovely guy, by the way. I've spoken to him a few times when he's joking. <laughs> yeah, well, he did on the uh, on, on your episode. He, oh, no, well, yes, I think it was on the episode, actually. He, he said that he's been in touch with you a bit. And, um, yeah, nice yeah, guy. He is. And he's, I tell you what, it's, he's got... Um, it's just one of those people, isn't it, that you think just a solid, just a, a good soul. You know, that's sort yes, of... and I, I've never physically met him as such, but I, you know, I can sense that straight away. He's a, a lovely guy, without a doubt. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, so I mean, instant. Yeah, did it kind of, kind of freak you out though that this like this this guy from you know this young guy from South just from West Texas or whatever is just completely obsessed with you guys? I suppose, and, and as a you know as as someone who was there, then you know people like Brian and other fans like massive fans that are just obsessed with it. Does it like kind of do you? Do you head in a bit? Does it freak you out? No, no, no. You know, at the end of the day, the Oasis are the, the worldwide hit. And, uh, you know, it's nice to know that, uh, you know, all corners of the globe, really, that people are watching it. And, you know, like I say, he's a lovely chap. And stuff. As, as we know, spoke to him a couple of times. Yeah. Um, you know, absolutely not, no. Like, um, he's after my uh, collection. I, I do know that lot. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, whoa. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I've got a conservatory to build. So, <laughs> have you have you still got much? Have you still got much from the from the? Yeah, lots of discs. I mean, you know, there's things that I've got to say. Brian's nudged me on, and I'm going, no, where did I think that'd be? You know, I'm, mm. you know, will I sell it? I don't. You know, I'm not saying that's. I go through with everything, but I never thought that it'd be of interest, really. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there was some something he suggested the other day. Um, what was it? Clothes from a video or something? I'm like going, what? Really? <laughs> and I happen to have the same pair of jeans on from 25 years ago. So, yeah. Is... Yeah, I took them off and washed them immediately. Yeah, you shouldn't have washed them, mate. That's it. You've lost an extra 50 quid off them now. Well, they needed washing, mate. They needed washing. <laughs> Seriously. No, well, I mean, it is. It is just. That is just weird, though, isn't it? That that something that was yeah, fine if it's handwritten lyrics and things like that. But yeah. yeah. Something yeah, that so, something so sort of you wouldn't think of, but actually, yeah, there no. is such a um, it is such a legend, especially that sort of that um, couple of years, um, you know, from from ninety three to sort of you know early ninety five when you were there. It was it's the, the rise, is. yeah, it's the most important <laughs> side. So, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe maybe ninety five to ninety seven was quite important as well, but you know, I think. Oh, yeah. It's just a few more people turned up. That was all. <laughs> well, it's it's quite funny though when you when we you know I've been doing sort of polls and questions and things on this and you know and definitely maybe constantly wins you know whenever I put a poll out there best album definitely maybe always wins you know especially with yeah. the with the British guys I mean the Americans tend to favour um, Morning Glory and even a lot yeah. a lot of Be Here Now fans in America as well but but yeah definitely maybe is just constantly it's 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 never been beaten and and obviously you were the Literally the driving force under behind it, you know. So uh, yeah, uh, you know, it was a, it was a mishmash of an album. You know, it was, uh, you know, I can't say that it's a, t- two tunes that are somewhat the same on there. Like, yeah. like, you know, it was built up over a couple of years. Yeah. Um, the energy, the rawness of it, the the, the budget, we'll say. Mm. You know, I think after my time, then. Um, you know, there was a lot more money involved, but it was like get in there and do that in two takes and shut up. Yeah, <laughs> quick. Yeah, so but, I was done in half an hour and everything done. That is amazing. But that's what the Beatles <laughs> did, though, right? You know, that's that's what the Beatles did, and and yeah, I yes, think you can hear yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it's quite nerve wracking the whole um, you know experience. Uh, you know, something new to me back in the studio back then, surrounded by five million mics. It's like God, you know, don't. Fat, don't do anything wrong, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, 
Um, we, you know, couple of, Owen used to say, you know, I'll, I'll do no more than five takes because you, you'd be somewhat maybe losing your energy then. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, do, have a go five times, and uh, you know, majority of the time we we, we uh, nailed it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and just while talking about definitely maybe, I mean, the one thing that sort of um, really jumps out. You know, I went back and listened to that obviously in preparation for speaking to you well i listen to it all the time anyway but but i'd specifically listening out for the drumming and stuff and the yeah. amazing thing is that that um and while you've had sort of very unfair criticism over the years from certain yeah. parties actually yeah. how many songs in that pe- in that time period start with an isolated drum track start with you you know and it, yeah and a lot of the yeah. most important ones did like live forever and supersonic together you know uh, matured together somewhat musically um and you know yeah that was my input i mean supersonic uh, i don't know if noel will remember this but i was sound checking i was sound checking at the real people studio and uh i think we're there to do bring it on down or something like that uh which you know whatever anybody says in the end it it just wasn't the right tune to release at the time uh, I, I, hindsight's a great thing, I'd say. Mm-hmm. So, but we were, you know, I don't know if I set up some new um, symbols. I don't know exactly what happened, but anyway, I was just a, as you know the simple beat mm-hmm. to the start of Supersonic, for example. And the next thing, no cracks open the door. He says, "Keep that coin, keep that coin," and <laughs> bang, Supersonic came together within minutes. So whether it was one that he had up his sleeve or. Mm. And was, uh, whether it came together that night, I, I, I haven't got a clue. But mm. so yeah, mm. that's how it all, all happened. But mm. you know, again, we all had our input, our own input. There's nothing yeah. on there that you know, uh, not all structured for anybody, if you like. No, no. And so, I mean, like on a similar tip as well. I mean, live forever. Once again, it's that iconic drum beat that kicks it off. And yeah, was so, that? But once it like when you're arranging the songs, is it like yeah? you know yeah let's start with four bars of that or was that kind of just decided as a, as a group or was that more no uh, saying well it, it, it's rehearsals like you know and then it's something well you know when I think back there was some kind of a was it some kind of a, an acoustic sort of intro and then but then you know where the idea came I'm sure it was my own but you know like you know what about this and mm. uh and it, it, it lasted, and as you say, it, it, it stuck. Yeah. So, and a great intro, great intro. No, it's fantastic. Different. Well, it, it is different, and it's so iconic. That's the thing. It's, it's. I mean, now you hear it, and it's like, oh, that's live forever. You know, that's it. But yeah, but, instant. Yeah, yeah. But you sort of forget that what it was at the time, and and you know, and literally coming out the speakers, you're like, what the hell is this? But um. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I think Alan McGee once upon a time said about, you know. Uh, was he referring back to the 70s or something you know the drummers back then uh you know there was a lot of intro uh, intros with drumming as such yeah and and not that it was on purpose again it was a hindsight thing on alan's behalf um and you know it made sense it actually made, it really made sense so mm. yeah yeah it was, and it, it just you know we've put it down and was like put it down on paper if you like going yeah it has to start there it's you know it's, uh, I mean, as a youngster, um, following marching bands on the streets and stuff mm-hmm. like that, it was all relevant, yeah. you know. And uh, again, also the I'd be the stooge if you like at family weddings who come the end <laughs> of the night they'd, they'd sit me on there and a guy, you know, I couldn't reach the pedals, I couldn't reach the foot, reach the foot <laughs> pedals, but um, it was just if you like entertaining for the family and uh, and I'm talking five, six, seven, eight, you know, that sort of an age. Mm. And um, yeah, uh, uh, drumming was my thing, really. Yeah. 
No, I love it. I, I just love all that. I mean, I've, I come from an Irish family as well, so getting this yeah, sort yeah. of the Irish background, and that's definitely, I mean, you can, you get the feel for that, you know, from Oasis. And, and it's even doing this, and Americans have been asking me, kind of like I'm some sort of expert, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but like, oh, what, what was it? And what is that humour? And it's like, well, it's a very mancunian humor but it's also a very irish humor i think it's that yeah, absolutely absolutely i mean I, I i'd even cross that over to to the music i really would um you know that pumps the air kind of celtic rock that we grew up with or yeah. wh- whatever it might have been uh, it was always played in our house um and I, i'm i'm very sure that it had an influence on every member of oasis without a doubt yeah yeah, yeah. so um yeah, it crossed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a natural thing. Um, yeah. On that front, actually, one of the strange things that um, I, um, someone did ask this question. I'll, I'll credit them later. Sorry, I'm not going to dig it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, yeah, that like obviously you're an Irish. You know, obviously you're born there, and well, some of you born there, some are born in Ireland. But then, sort of, you know, you have the big Union Jack painted in the rehearsal room. And right. then, and then Joel, and then Noel with his Union Jack guitar. I mean, what that, that always surprised me. Sort of coming from an Irish uh, Catholic background, uh, uh, I can't comment. I really don't know on that. Why, why, why? I don't know. Mm. Um, me, I don't know. Just like I the pop. I, I mean, I, the only thing I think, I suppose, it's like the pop art kind of. They used it, you know, the Who used it, and Keith Moon had his yeah. famous Union Jack Jack. So it's more like a, a symbol, like using the mod target or whatever, rather than meaning Possibly, anything. Yeah, yeah, I go with a bit of that, but, you know, uh, you know, we can never deny his roots, and I don't yeah. know why he used that at the time. I, I, can't, I can't answer for him. Yeah, but, no, You know, I, as we grew bigger in Ireland, then no became more Irish, I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> if you like. <laughs> well, that's something you say in the book. It's like suddenly you think, oh, where's that come from then? You know, and it's sort of... Uh, yeah, it is. It, it, I suppose it, it depends. It, it must be hard when you're being interviewed. You kind of your your sort of story changes depending on who you're being interviewed by. And I think maybe that all the guys in the band have been a bit guilty of that. Maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, again, I suppose you're adding humour to an interview, so whatever. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, whatever that might mean or what relevance mm. or whatever. Yeah. You know, hand in hand, really. So yeah. it doesn't really matter where you come from, I suppose. No, but no. No, no, no. Cool. Um, I was just going to ask, like the, um, you know, sort of going back to kind of the, the very early days, like the pre kind of Gallagher days, even because this is a, this is an area that you know when I've put it out on the, uh, for questions for on the like especially with the Live Forever forum. So shout out to the guys over there who are, yeah, who Hello. probably know more more about Oasis than any of you lot. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the one thing, I mean, the, the question that they sort of had is like the, the early demos, they're like the Colour My Life and Alice and, yes. I mean, any yes. sort of other insight into those that like, you know, for instance, we've sort of heard that, well, maybe Bonehead co-wrote, you know, so there's, you know, who, who... Take Me, I think it was. In... Yeah. So you've got... We only had one or two tunes, like when, you know, Noel came on board and that's, uh, you know, his influence and Colour My Life, uh yeah, Bonehead did write Take Me, but Noel added to it. Um, Bonehead and Liam even wrote Take Me. Yeah. Um, there was a couple of, I can't remember all the, all the titles, but yeah. so you know, you... we only had one or two tunes, we really did. And then when Noel joined, he started sort of moulding the, the sound in different songs. Mm. None of them crossed over, I don't think, to, to definitely maybe. But, you know, you, you, you just matured as a band and songwriting, uh, structures of songs, advice from the real people, for example. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, it just it kind of moulded us and are ready for the for the road and to, for a recording contract, if you like. Yeah, yeah. I think saying about the real people, I mean, that, that comes across so much in your book. You know, you clearly oh. want to give them as, as big a shout out as possible. Without a doubt, yeah. Yeah, they, 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 they were thrown off the bus at some point, and it's like, well, these lads have done us massive favours. Yeah. You know, uh, they really did, and I think they, they came to the end of their recording contracts. And I suppose you've got that bug of not wanting to let it go. Um, yeah. But I, I can't credit them lads enough, and I, I do wish Oasis and the other members. Would, would would you know give them a shout sometimes mm. well i mean there's the the hilarious one and i'll drop in a clip of it here is one of the real people songs that you know the song don't go away by oasis is literally yes. you know that true wow. it's ridiculous it's like oh god yeah so yeah. Uh, is that uh, well I, I, I don't you know it's too blindingly obvious it oh, really yeah. is oh, 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 oh. i 
know, and you just. So. But especially like with the, you know, I think that, but I think to be fair, I think that, that you know, the fans know, right? You know, the fans know how, how important they were. And, but it was just, as yeah. I say, it's just really good that, that your book called that out because you didn't need to do that, you know, in your book. No. But yeah, you, you really, obviously that must have been important to you to get that out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm still in touch with the lads now. So, um, you know, may well be doing something, not on the musical side, but maybe getting involved with them quite soon uh, actually from Griffiths last week but uh, total respect to them lads all of them Chris mm-hmm. Tony Martin a lot of them a lot of them yeah no no fair enough that's great and then talking about sort of keeping in touch with people I mean what about you know the, the sort of it seems to be the Oasis curse that people sort of tend to disappear off the face of the earth after they sort of yeah of um, course yeah um, any do we know about Chris Hutton did you ever stay, stay in touch with him I, I can't say I stayed in touch, but you know it's always uh, you know lots of love shown for each other. Once we do, you know, come across each other here and there, um, uh, you know, Chris, I consider him a friend without a doubt. Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunate that he, he didn't cross over with us, if you like. But uh, you know, that's just how it how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Mm. But um, you know, we, we, we found something and we, we moved on very yeah. quickly. So. Yeah. No, fair enough. And what about um, uh, what about the other guys? That you still stay in touch with, sort of uh, like well, without the, the the Gallagher's, but like Gwigs, Bonehead, still see it. Uh, I've not seen Gwigs from the from the day you know the last gig we ever did together. Yeah. Um, I, you know, compliments to Gwigs. I, I really, really would love to say hello. Do you know what I mean? I would. Mm-hmm. Um, got much love and respect for Gwigs and all of them. Um, uh, but how do I put it? Bonehead, bonehead now and again, and I mean really now and again. We we it happened on each other. Uh, that's always pleasant. Um, the biggest, you know, the, the one before Christmas was uh, Liam. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was the, the the supersonic film. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now I didn't I didn't plan going back to the hotel. It was actually Brian Cannon who uh, said, "Yo, come in the hotel." I was I was legless. Let's put it that way. <laughs> So I had a bit of confidence behind me. Come on then, fuck it, let's have it. <laughs> so uh, went into the uh, hotel in town, up a few floors, and there was like a balcony bar or whatever. It's hammered, lots of people there. And uh, I said, where's Liam? I said, hey, over there, over there. I went over and I just stood him. I went, oi. And he just stood up, the biggest Tony man, fuck it. And he, you know what? It was brilliant. It was absolutely excellent oh, to see him. Great. You know, it really was. And I was so... So nervous, if you like, and it was twenty odd years, and I'm like, Jesus, how's this gonna go? Um, I was out of my face, is the truth, drunk, and it was like, I couldn't get me fucking words out. <laughs> Even, you know, that would have been difficult, maybe sober. Yeah. But uh, you know, it, it, um, you know, compliments to Liam, he Paul Debbie's new partner over, and said, look, we, we need a chat in there, me and him, fan as a table, and sat with him. He brought over this three part shot I've never seen in my life it probably cost about 300 quid each you don't know <laughs> but uh, fuck me I was out of my head after that I was like, what? but just natural chat it was like oh yeah. man over here blah blah blah, blah. And, and it was brilliant it really was and then a few people started surrounding the table and stone a bit it was like right right enough so, but just that initial contact hello blah blah, blah and walked away feeling on top of the world they really did but yeah. you know well look I do respect him I know it's, he's, he's got a nuts life he really has yeah so uh, you know he's, he's a great guy he really is I know he's, he's still there so yeah no that's great that's really nice you had that and, and sort of I mean and one of the questions that one of the guys asked actually is, is if Liam had got in touch and said Tony come and drum for my uh, new solo band would you have done that? I, I don't have to answer that, do I? I <laughs> without a doubt, yes. Without a doubt, I'd love that. My God, yes. Without a doubt, I'd love to open up and be there, be part of it. Yeah. <clears throat> Some somewhat a reunion, as I, I referred to it at one point. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, Bonehead so. got on stage. I don't know if you saw this, but Bonehead got on stage with him at Manchester um, a couple oh. of nights ago. Oh. 